So as of right now, as I'm working on a car, as I'm deciding what I want to film and everything that I want to show you, one thing that I struggle with is the fact of a lot of the stuff gets to be a little bit repetitive. So I try to pick and choose a couple of the things that I show you so that way it's a little bit more interesting. So that way, by the time you watch the entire process of all of my videos from start to finish, you don't just see six videos of me in a row doing body work, even though I'm out here for many a days just doing body work. So one thing that I have to do not on this car, on my 1988 LS swapped Honda Accord. That thing gave up on me the other day. So Sunday morning I went to take it out to Cars and Coffee and it just was not wanting to fire up. We diagnosed it to be a problem with what we think is the fuel pump. The fuel pressure is just a little bit low and that fuel pump is actually the original fuel pump from the GTO. Basically everything else was swapped and has new parts. So it only makes sense that it might be the fuel pump so we're going to be working on the 1988 LS swapped Honda Accord. We are definitely going to be working on the hatch, and we'll just have to see where else this video goes. But either way, man, you're joining me today, and I'm glad to have you here. And now, you're watching the If Someone Rear-Ended Your Wife and Her Car and There's No Damage to the Vehicle, You Got Bigger Problems channel of YouTube. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what is up, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me yet again on another video. So we have a fuel pump right here from Rock Auto. As I was building my LS Swap Honda Accord, I had a donor car, if you're not familiar with the entire process. And the donor car was a 2004 Pontiac GTO, which comes with an LS and a T56. So the idea was let's use as many things that I could use off of the GTO as possible because I want to save money and try to make the car go together nice and easy. So one of those things that was used from the GTO was the entire fuel tank because it holds the pump, it holds everything. The sending unit for my gauge is what we tapped in for my digital dash. And everything's all set up that way. So this is just a factory fuel pump. The old one was working fine until we believe it gave up. So that's the new unit right there. So let me uh, let me turn my attention to the car to get the old one ripped out. Then I'll sit them next to one another and we'll we'll see. I mean, they should be the same. So with this, since I'm using the factory tank, there's just a little snap ring on the top. You just gotta kind of hit it off. I know you shouldn't really hit a flathead with a hammer, but don't care. So this ring pops off and <clears throat> just like that this is the old pump. See the thing is when I when we built this car one thing that we wanted to focus on was serviceability. The idea that we could just get to the pump from inside the trunk it's just literally exposed it's right there. Got this out in a matter of three minutes. Real good move. So here we go. Here's the old one. I don't know if this is the original one from when the car was first, you know, took off the assembly line. This is a GM pump, housing, everything. Here's our aftermarket one. It looks a little bit different, but it is definitely a lot cleaner. There's a few differences on them on the way that they're put together, but it should be fine. So I'm not going to spend any time going into any unneeded detail. I'm just going to go ahead and get it in the car and try to get this thing fired up, man. It's been too long. I hate seeing the, the car sit. unit pump ventilation return is on the tank looking good baby all right so at this point we got the car running now it was not easy to get here actually after I put in the fuel pump it still did not want to fire 
So I was poking around, checking for voltage, making sure my injectors had 12 volts at them, making sure the coils had 12 volts, making sure everything was okay. I had to check my crank sensor to make sure that it was picking up signal. Also, I had to make sure that the computer was seeing RPM because it just did not want to fire. Then I did a compression test. Everything looked fine, but as I was doing the compression test, I noticed the plugs looked really dark, but I knew there was spark at the plugs. So if there's sparks at the plugs, but the plugs are not igniting, I was thinking it could only be the plugs. So I just went ahead this morning and I threw in eight new plugs and it fired right up. It's smoking quite a bit. Probably just some of that residual stuff burning off, hopefully. Maybe that smoke is causing all the black on the spark plugs. I'll just have to dive into it a little bit more just to see how it goes. But either way, man, this car being stuck right here was tying me up and preventing me from doing a lot of the other stuff that I needed to do. So it's really nice to get it fired up and um, I'm actually gonna hit the block with it and see how it goes. reset everything so it's got to relearn everything but once I drive it around it should clean up quite a bit let's see all right so I made it out to the gas station everything seemed to be fine I'm just filling it up with some fresh 93 right now it was running pretty pretty bad on the way up here like a decent amount of smoke and whatnot but it also hasn't ran in over a month there might have been a lot of bad fuel in there through the lines or who knows I'm not too sure but either way man I'm gonna top it off with 93 and then we'll hit the road and see uh, see what happens. Here we go. So now that we got the Accord going and everything is looking good on that end, since I am working on the weekend here, on the weekend I like to get some personal stuff knocked out. So with the with the hatch over here, one thing that I had to do, the roof was just so dented up, crazy wavy, I ended up skimming the entire thing. Now that might scare a lot of people to think that I'm slathering the entire roof in Bondo. You might think I'm a cake mixer or a cake spreader or a cake decorator, but that's not how it works. What matters is how thick the body filler is. The body filler on this roof is so thin that it's nearly transparent in a lot of spots and I still have a lot more blocking to do to get it perfectly worked out. And honestly, I think in the end it still might look a little bit a little bit wavy just from how tweaked and how unsupported the roof is from underneath like as I'm working it the metals just bouncing around and if the metals not stiff as I'm working it and as I'm blocking it and it's just bouncing around like I'm saying it's so what I want to do is I want to get the hacks out of here and I want to get my daily TL in here to finish a project that I've been meaning to get completed I just have boxes sitting in my living room waiting to go in that car and this is something that Ava's been wanting me to do. This is something uh, that I'm just going to get started on. And I actually forgot something that's really important for me to move this car. I obviously got to start it. Now, when I was fitting the front bumper, the ground for the battery went where that bolt has to go through for the bumper. Now, I'm talking about the crash bar, which is just the bumper. Bumper cover is the plastic part. Bumper is the crash bar. Well, what you think is the crash bar, but it's just called the bumper. Anyways, I digress. So I need to get the battery situated again. Now for me to get that situated, I got to rip off the whole front end, but that's no problem because this fender right here came to us damaged. We actually have a new one right here. So the new one's going to have no filler on it whatsoever. The old one, I got it pretty straight, but pretty straight with filler is not as good as no filler at all.
All right, so we got the Civic out of here. Now we got my daily, my Acura TL pulled in here. Now, if you're not familiar with this car in the store behind it, this is a 2006 Acura TL. I got it from my brother. I painted the entire thing because it needed it, and now I am dailying it. This is what I drive every single day, mainly to take my daughter to school back and forth, and it is absolutely filthy right now because the pollen is so crazy. I've been washing it every single week, but it's just so hard to keep it together. Now, as I was building this car, I wanted to make it the ultimate daily for me, my life, and my family. So with my daughter, Ava, and Mama Bear, you know how it goes, one of their favorite things to do is jam out to music in the house. We got music videos playing pretty much 24 seven. Ava loves to sing and dance with these music videos and to just go hard, just listening to what she likes. So I wanted to make this car that she's going to be driving in all of the time. I wanted to upgrade the sound system. Now. I don't know too much about audio. I don't specialize in audio and I don't have a lot of experience in that field of automotive upgrading and customization. So I did a little bit of research and CT Sound seemed to be the best option for what I wanted to do. I contacted them and I was like, I wanted to put a package together. I told them what I wanted. They came up with a list for me. I just told them the car, they put together everything that I would need and we have it all laid out right here. So I'll just briefly go over it. I don't want to bore you with the information. This is a four channel amp. This is for my speakers. This is a one channel amp. This is going to be for the big woofer in the back. Speaking of subwoofer, we got this right here, two tens and a ported box. Everything by CT Sounds. They're doing the whole entire system. So that's looking really good. We also have my front speakers. These are the speakers and the tweeters. And then we also have the back speakers. Now a lot of this stuff was installed quite a while ago, so I'm gonna go back to that. Now I just got the subs delivered the other day, so now I want to finish everything, but I'm going to start off by showing you a little bit of the before videos. So right here, the first box that we open, this is our component speakers for the front. So even if your car isn't factory wired to have tweeters and whatnot, if it's more of a traditional style, you can use this kit to run a much better system. my wiring for the sub. Every single thing that I'm getting and using is coming from CT Sounds. I'm not having to go to the hardware store, pick up lines, wires, inline fuses, like this is something so important. So the all the front speakers are running on their own fuse, the subs themselves are going to be fused by themselves separately. I'm also gonna have the subs on a switch. If I don't want to rattle the windows or bump too hard, I'll turn it off, or if, I don't know, if I ever take this car in for service, like an alignment or something, I'll just, flip it off. I don't need anybody doing anything too crazy. So I got to figure out, well not figure out, I got to start working towards getting this put in the trunk and getting this car buttoned up once and for all. right here and I could just I got the amp right there I don't know if the brightness is gonna adjust but I just got to make all my connections switch 12 we also have a remote that we're going to be doing I got my fuse right there right above the amp it's just a couple more things that I got to hook up and then we're gonna 
We're gonna try to shake, uh, shake the license plate or do something. Is that what people do? They shake their license plate. Something's gonna happen. Okay, Eva, I got the speakers in the car. You wanna hear it? You wanna go inside and hear it? So we got the subs in here. Everything is looking good. Nice, clean, fit and finish. This is a perfect size for I'd imagine really any sedan. It's not gonna be like too big or too crazy or anything like that. And this is the box that they offer. And I like the idea that this is just a kit that they had online and they could just send me the box. I know usually you buy the subs and then build the box, but I don't wanna deal with doing all of that, especially with how much I have going on. I just wanted to order something that I can go ahead and throw in there. And also something else that I like about this kit. So the way that we ran it, I didn't use any of the OEM wires, speakers, configuration, nothing. I just ran it completely from scratch with all the wires that they sent with it. So like, for example, this speaker wire is a lot thicker than the speaker wire that's going to come factory. So I can get behind a kit that is going to be a completely run it from scratch type of kit meaning you could put this in any car and it's going to sound good as opposed to having to worry about this car had a factory amp and it. it did also have an eight inch subwoofer on the rear deck and trying to configure out and talk to the sub and this and they just don't overcomplicate it just running everything from scratch is really easy simple so enough about the tl we finally got this thing looking good finally got this thing done i've been driving around for a few weeks with it in disarray because this is my daily and i just had the back seats kind of thrown in there so i can take ava back and forth to school and whatnot so anyways i'm a little all over the place on this video but it is the weekend that's what i like to try to do i worked on the v8 ls swapped honda accord we got a TL completely tidied up and now I'm going to focus back on the Boosted Boys EK hatch because now that I tidied up all those loose ends, the car needs to become the main focus once again and I need to focus on getting that thing finished because we have another project right after that already lined up. It's actually already here. I'll show you that in a little bit. So at this point we are in a really good spot because all of these other projects that were somewhat distracting me, preventing me from finishing this car, from making a lot of progress on this car, we have finished them, got them knocked out and got them out of the way. So here it is Monday morning, I'm going to be able to focus on getting this car a lot closer to being done. Now my overall plan is with this car and the steps that I'm doing, I will get into the next video seeing as this video has dragged on for long enough. So let me know what you think of everything that had happened in this video. There's quite a few things a little bit all over the place, but that's okay. We had to get those things knocked out. So thank you guys so much for watching. Also, links will be down in the description below and some merch, bro. Get you some merch if you want to support the channel. Get some merch, like this video, comment, subscribe. Do all this stuff. You know what it is, YouTube. I'll see you on the next one. Oh, shoot. Where's my kid? Did I leave her? Did I leave her at the store? Gotta go.